The Lies of Locke Lamora, one of the most iconic pieces of fantasy literature in the 21st century. However, as with every popular book, there also comes haters, and that is no different with The Lies of Locke Lamora. The author is trying way too hard to make his characters cool. What with the stupid banter, the out of place swearing, it reads just like an 11 year old trying to sound cool. One star is almost too generous for this piece of I can't do it. If I had to read one more page of this stupid book, I'm gonna rip it to shreds. What a load of steaming. However, this series is also unique since similar to A Game of Thrones and The King Killer Chronicles, this series remains unfinished and now 10 years later, we still don't know when the next book in the series will come out. So let's discuss why some readers hate this book, why The Gentleman Bastards hasn't had a release date for 10 years, and lastly, why you should still consider reading this book. Firstly, why do readers hate this iconic novel? Now if you don't know anything about the story, then I'll give you a brief spoiler free overview. We basically follow this group of misfits that have become the best schemers or thieves in this kingdom and we basically follow this group as they try to pull off one of the most daring and complex heists yet. Now a common criticism is that Scott Lynch relies too heavily on conveniences. Now the argument basically goes as follows. Whenever Locke Lamora is in a seemingly impossible situation, a convenient and a too basic option will present itself that allows him to escape. Now, there seems to be a mismatch in how Locke Lamora is presented. While Locke is supposed to be this incredible con man, he seems to be more messy and just plain lucky. Or at least that's what some people argue. Now, secondly, some readers find the reading to be overly pretentious and having too much unnecessary swearing and vulgar <coughs> language. Now, this is a reason why many people will fall in love with the series, but I can understand that it may be a turn off for some readers. Now, thirdly, some people argue that this book is filled with inconsistencies and relies too much on plot armor. Now, plot armor is a phenomenon in fiction referring to a concept where the main character is allowed to survive dangerous situations because the author relies on the main character surviving for the plot to continue. Now, out of all the arguments for not enjoying Lives of Locke Lamora, I think this is the strongest argument by far. There are some clear situations in this book where you could argue that Locke shouldn't have survived and seemingly only did so to keep the plot moving forward. Now, I don't think this book grossly misuses plot armor, but I, you can definitely argue that it is there. So those are the three main reasons why people don't like this book. Scott Lynch relies too heavily on conveniences to allow Locke Lamora to survive, the language is too vulgar, and the plot relies too much on plot armor. But those arguments are usually not the main reasons why people feel frustrated about this series. Rather, it is the fact that it's been 10 years since the last release in this series. Now, in fantasy, there are three authors who are infamous for writing popular fantasy books and not finishing their series. George R. R. Martin with A Song of Ice and Fire, Patrick Rothfuss with The King Killer Chronicles, and Scott Lynch with The Gentleman Bastards. However, there seems to be a clear difference in how these fan bases have evolved over the past decade. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I state that Martin's and Rothfuss's fan bases have become increasingly more toxic in the past years. Readers are left frustrated with both of these authors for several reasons. Firstly, Martin seems to be doing everything except writing book 6 in A Song of Ice and Fire. He is working on a ton of side projects, but doesn't seem to be that passionate about continuing his main series. And on the other hand, Rothfuss has become under fire for seemingly scamming his readers. Yes, you heard that right. And that he just seems to be a really bad communicator. No one knows what's going on with book 3 in the King Color Chronicles, with many readers seeming to become more and more confident that book 3 will never arrive. Now, while Lynch has frustrated many of his readers, the fan base is at a much better place for this reason. Lynch is not only continuously communicating with his readers, but he has been very open about having struggled with a wide range of medical and mental health issues, which has made the work on book 4 incredibly challenging. Now, obviously, hearing about Lynch having health issues is heartbreaking, but his willingness to communicate and be open about these things is helping him maintain the trust with his readers. Secondly, Lynch has been working on three novellas set in the Gentleman Bastards universe, which means that he's not only working on this universe, but he also wants to give readers something to read while they're waiting for book four. I think that out of A Song of Ice and Fire, King Kill Chronicles and The Gentleman Bastards, most readers remain the most confident that the Gentleman Ambassador series will reach its conclusion someday because Lynch has been very open about having finished a first draft of book 4 for example. So with all of these things going against this series, why should you still pick up The Lies of Locke Lamora? 
Now, if you've been following me, then you will know that The Lies of Waglamora was not only a book I enjoyed, but it was my favorite read of 2022. It absolutely blew me away and it, it exceeded my expectations in almost every sense. So firstly, what if you are one of those that doesn't want to start an unfinished series? Now, believe me, I get it. The only reason I hadn't read Loch Lamora until now was for that reason. However, I would say that this book can almost be read as a standalone. It has a very clear beginning, middle and end. And you don't have to continue the series after finishing The Lies of Loch Lamora. So please, if you're worried about the fact that the series remains unfinished, treat it as a standalone. Now, I will definitely be continuing this series eventually, but I don't feel a massive need to continue the series straight away since the story is quite self-contained. But let's get into some specifics. Firstly, let's talk about some things I absolutely loved. I loved Lynch's writing. I found the writing to be incredibly clever. It matched the vibe of the story incredibly well, which allowed me to get so immersed in the story. Now, I know some people have said that they had to get adjusted to the prose, now, I didn't feel that way, but this book is not a Sanderson novel. The prose is like 10 times richer than a Sanderson book, so just keep that in mind. But I was incredibly impressed by Lynch's ability to write atmosphere and dialogue, and the way the plot is structured is brilliant, and the politics was just so well done. Now, if you know me, then you know I love fantasy books that have great dialogue and are able to create tension through the dialogue alone, and that is very much the case here. Lynch is such a good writer that he doesn't need big battle scenes or explosions to create tension. He literally just needs to have two characters that talk together, which is my kind of fantasy. Now, secondly, the characters, nearly all of them, are absolutely incredible. Now, I'm very biased here, but underdogs are my favorite thing in fantasy. And this book literally is about a group of misfits or underdogs that try and do the impossible. Now, along with the main plotline, we also have these interludes where we get insights into the Loch Lamora's journey from a young boy to the man he is today. And that really allowed me to get invested into his character. Loch Lamora is an incredibly complex yet compelling character. And there's just something about fantasy where the, a group is trying to get back at the elite that I just love. And the Brotherhood, I need to talk about the Brotherhood because the Brotherhood is top notch in this series. This book has some of the best friendships I've come across already. I know I've only read the first book, but this series already has some of the best friendships I have come across in fantasy and I've heard it gets even better in book two and three. And thirdly, I think this book just felt incredibly clever. Now, I stated at the beginning of the video that some people feel that Lynch relies too much on plot armor and conveniences. And while I can understand that argument, I did not feel that way at all while re reading this book. I thought everything that happened was incredibly well explained and Lynch has an incredible ability to add layers upon layers to the plot which creates this incredible intense tension while you're reading because there are so many moving parts. When reading this book, the complexity and the tension slowly increases and it all builds up towards a very satisfying climax. Now this is one of those books where you feel like every chapter serves its purpose. Each chapter adds another layer of complexity or character depth or tension which makes the whole reading experience so so satisfying. So yes, while this series remains unfinished and some people do not love it, I think it's one of the best fantasy books I have ever read and I would highly recommend it. I had an incredible time reading this and even if the series will never be finished, I would still recommend reading this book. I gave Lies of Loch Lamora 5 out of 5 stars, obviously, and I can't recommend it enough. So what are your thoughts on unfinished series? Definitely let me know in the comments down below and if you want to support what I do here, please consider joining the Patreons. And speaking of Patreons, a special thanks to my Patreons to support what I do here, I really appreciate it. See you in the next video.